Hello and welcome to the Skills Teams podcast on getting ready for the next semester. In this short podcast, we're going to discuss mainly organisation and reflection as well as what the team's best advice is. We're also going to hear some student voices about what they think is a good, is good practice for organisation. So first of all, let's introduce ourselves. So I'm Alex, I'm a skilled co-creator at the University of Derby. And then I'm doing a graduate placement in the skills team at the university. I'm Naomi, I am the skills senior officer. I'm Catherine and I'm also a skills co-creator. So yeah, now we're going to talk about briefly what our quick fire advice is for getting ready. So we're going to start with you, Catherine. What do you think is your best advice for getting ready for the next semester? Mine is really basic. Just to know what day you need to go back to university and what time you start. It's crucial. That is quite important. Yeah. I know I actually went, when I started high school, I went back on the wrong day. So yeah, my mum took me a day early to high school. So it's crucial that you do know when you're going. You were a day early. Did yeah. she real, Did you realise before she left? Or were well, you stranded there? I, I realised when the bus didn't turn up. And then I realised when I had to get an emergency lift. But yeah. So is, you weren't just at your school? I, I did get there. Wandering the halls. I did get there early. So yeah, it's crucial to make sure you know the date and time so that especially not getting there early, but also making sure you don't miss things because the first lectures are crucial. It's like the clock change, isn't it? Yeah. We used to always used to find, because it's always on a Sunday when we were at church in the morning, depending on which way it went, you'd either have people turning up an hour early mm-hmm. and wondering where everyone was or turning up an hour late, mm-hmm. which was more funny because then everyone's there to see yeah. <laughs> and laugh. Yeah. So, Diana, what's your advice then? I think that my piece of advice would be to read carefully your feedback from this semester. And then if you read your feedback from all the coursework that you did and try to find some key themes. So based on that, you can actually improve your work this semester. So for example, if more lecturers told you to be more critical, then you can make an action plan based on that. And for example, see the skills team or just read our online resources. Mm -hmm. So sounds good. So my quick fire advice is to start as early as possible on your assignments. So at the start, it's about getting ahead really. So I would recommend doing some pre-reading, learn the course before your first lectures. So then when you go to the lectures, you'll start to understand what is going on. Uh, but you're too good a student, aren't you? Well, it's not actually that hard. I just read the first introductory chapters, maybe some revision guides, and just get a brief overview. So then when I get there, I, I'm not confused about terms and I'm I'm running before we get going. So do you do that as a student? Is that how you operate? That's the best way that I, I aim to do that. I've done it on some modules, not others, and those say, modules have done better. I think we should have a quick fire round because mm. um, we've all studied at various points in our lives. Diana, have you ever done that? No. Catherine, have you ever done that? No. I've never done that. I've I can see it. why it's a good idea, so but I've never done it. No. So, Listeners, try it. Let us know. So with the modules I did it on, I'd spoken to the students in the higher years, and they said that those were the harder ones, so I did those. I aim for those ones, and actually, I did better than those than the ones that they said were the easier ones because I spent more time and effort. Mm. And how we get my head around some of the key terms quite early, and I'm sure my lecturers and impressed them, so it was good. I did come out of a lecture recently where I thought I had no idea what's gone on, so that might have been really beneficial for me to do for that lecture. It's difficult to know in advance, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I wouldn't have known what terminology they were going to be using in that lecture. No. I find it in meetings, when I'm in meetings with people who are using acronyms mm-hmm. particularly, and I always, sometimes just out of perversity, stop them and make them explain what the acronyms are. I've been but, in um, it those makes, meetings with you. What would I that? <laughs> <laughs> but it does make a big, real difference, just to understand that terminology, whether that's in a meeting or whether that's in a lecture or mm. whatever. Understanding what people are saying is a really key a key thing. Yeah. I'm sure everyone will agree. It, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Actually, it's a good question to ask. If you don't understand something, it's probably a lot of other people in the audience thinking the same thing. Mm. So always ask them questions. That's, something, that's mm. another piece of good advice. So Naomi, what's your quick fire piece of advice for getting ready for the next semester? My quick fire advice is to think about what you want to gain from that semester. So is there a particular module that you're really interested in, something you really want to find out? Is there a particular skill that you want to develop, like Diana was saying, make an action plan maybe for that? And thinking about what you want to achieve before the semester starts will give you a bit more focus during it. And also at the end, it will help you look back as well because you'll be able to see how far you've progressed with doing that. Sounds good. Um, Another piece of top advice there, Naomi? 
Um, so yeah, now we're going to now we discuss some pieces of quick fire advice. Let's get into the main body. So one of the most crucial things that you can do before you go to the next semester is get yourself organized. So Naomi, what piece of advice would you give to students and how you would get organized before the next semester? Definitely um, be flexible. So if you make a plan, try and stick to it, but be prepared to change it if or when circumstances change. Um, So I always think making a plan is a good idea, but don't be so wedded to it that you can't be, be flexible and change it when you need to. That's a big thing about reflection there, isn't there, about thinking about that plan and reflecting on that. Is it actually working, not sticking to it if it's not, yeah. or adapting it to the circumstances? So, Catherine, have you got any advice for organisation? Yeah, it's not really advice for getting organised before you start, but once yeah. you get there. It's good advice. So I take handwritten notes during my lectures, um, and then I type up the most important pieces of information, so the, the bits of information that I might use after I've finished university or um, things that I might take into practice. So, for example, I might make a list of the interventions for any disorders. So then I've got those interventions to hand. Just tell people what you're studying, just to give some context. Counselling and psychotherapy. I was just wanting to say I'm reading Catherine's notes over her shoulder here and I thought you'd written, but hype up, you've written type up. But it looks like it says hype up, hype up the most important information. I think that's also really good good advice. Really hype it up. You see, what I think is really important about Catherine's advice is actually she's revising constantly by writing it in. She's actually revising her notes and making them pass to her brain for a second time. It's really interesting because if you watch our most recent podcast, it's about exam revision. And in that podcast, Catherine says that she doesn't revise, Mm -hmm. but actually she revises without realising she's actually revising. Yeah. So that's another crucial method of revising. But I'm having to write these down because I know I won't remember them. But then you're helping (laughs) you remember them, aren't you? Possibly, yeah. So it's a great tip for organisation and for also revision. Mm -hmm. So my piece of advice would be about organisation, would be to create a folder system. So storing all your resources in a place where you can access them, I think is really important. I know that before I started university, I was the most disorganized person. I turned up to classes and I would be pulling through my folders looking for the, the notes that I had. So I store everything electronically now, as well as also having a folder of the notes that people have printed out for me. Um, I used to print them out, but I think actually for an environmental perspective, I try to use them electronically to save printing things and saving and also save money. Yeah, This is something we disagree on, isn't it, Alex? We've talked about this before because I'm very anti-folder systems. I just have everything chucked in and then I use the search function. And when I'm looking for something, I search for it. But again, it's different ways of working. It's finding out what works well for you. Especially if you've got like an open book exam coming up, having a folder system would be something good to have ready and start doing, especially if you can take that into the exam with you. Um, I think I like to have like organized folders as well, but not to organize if it makes sense. I mean, I would have lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, something like that, but I wouldn't like have more folders in lecture one, for example. You're not going for subfolders. Yes. <laughs> Do you have subfolders, Alex? Yes. Yes. Especially on the computer, it's very easy to make subfolders and then it's all organized. If I need a document, I will know where that is, especially if I don't like, to, I've not got much time to study, so I don't want to be wasting it faffing around. And I like to procrastinate, so any excuse. See, I don't like to waste the time thinking about what folder it needs to go into, and then when I'm finding it, thinking about what folder I put it in. Well, it's I inter- again, it's just interesting. It's different uses of yeah. time, different way your mind works. Well, I make my folder system before the semester starts when I've got more oh, time. Oh, good grief, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't as good as it is now, but over time I've reflected. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, why, that's one of the ways that I get organised in advance of the semester, as well as getting organised through the semester. So, Diana, what piece of advice have you got? Um, I think what helped me a lot to get organized is keeping a calendar. Mm -hmm. So now I'm using Outlook Calendar, which is amazing, and it actually helps me a lot to organize my time. But when I was a student, I would just used to have like a printed one Mm -hmm. and write down my appointments and my lecture times and everything else that I need to do. I think there are many options out there, so you don't have to use a particular one. So I think that... It actually helps you a lot to see how much free time you actually have because sometimes you think you have more than you actually do. (laughs) I would say that like balance between studying and going out is also important Mm -hmm. to it's important to do both really because 
it's very important that you focus on your course as a primary aim, but it's also important that you're going out and see your friends and don't actually just spend your time just studying mm -hmm. because I don't think that's really healthy for you. Well, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I spent so much time studying just over Christmas and at the beginning of the new year that I'm having to give myself a break now. So on the days when I'm supposed to be in uni, I'm just making sure I'm not doing anything on those days or I'm going out to see my friends because that's what I lacked when I didn't have the time to do it. Yeah, it's very difficult, especially in the period when the deadlines are closed. Mm -hmm. Because actually you are busy and they are busy as well, mm -hmm. usually. But like, it's really important. And even if it's like only half an hour yeah. drinking a cup or something, it's really important that you do it. Mm. But it also helps realise how long you've got to do it and how you can fit your work in and do it. So you don't spend five hours procrastinating and then 10 hours solidly studying. You can plan it so that you have the, like two hours over that time and have regular breaks. And so would you guys plan your days down to that Excellent, because Danny, you were talking about a calendar, which to me, um, that would be thinking, planning my week maybe over the course of a calendar. But would yeah. you plan your day? So actually, I'm going to spend this hour doing this mm. and then this half an no, hour. No, not really. I would plan like, let's say, for example, I would do today four hours for studying, two hours, I don't know, I have an appointment, for example, mm. um, two hours doing something else. And then maybe in the evening at some point, I have some free time and then I decide what I do with it. But mm. I don't really plan it so much if that makes sense it's interesting because the busier i've become the more i've had to plan my evenings so i have to plan the time in the evening that i'm going to spend doing each different task that i do because i do some stuff outside of work as well as also studying um so i have to plan the hours that i spend doing that and then plan when i'm going to travel home and then plan what i'm going to do after that and then i plan an hour of okay i'm going to sit and play xbox i'm going to sit and see a friend and so on gonna be really honest but I, I don't think I if I would try to plan my evenings I don't think that would work mm. <laughs> I would probably just give up on any plans and just do whatever mm. I want to mm. I think what is important is not over planning so that you get stuck and like Naomi said earlier being flexible with that planning and I think another point that I want to touch on I know that this might be very personal but I heard people talking about before I can't really study or focus unless I organize my space mm -hmm. so if my room is not tidy yeah I I just can't do it I need to tidy up my room my house is spotless yes that's what I need for being able to study and if I don't know if for example the deadlines are very close and I don't really have all the time to do all the cleaning and whatever I need to I just go to the library mm -hmm. Just go somewhere else. Um, but I would I would study any day rather than tidy. I'd be the exact opposite. I'd be like, oh, oh, look, this needs a bit of a tidy and a clean. Oh, but look, my assignment needs doing. I'm going to do some <laughs> studying right now. And I do. I, I know I've said this before. I find it unnerving being somewhere that's too clean and tidy. I don't like it. Mm. But so. I think that's really useful when I actually got deadlines because you can focus on studying. While if I got deadlines and I'm at home and I see I don't know that I haven't done the dishes, I'm like, oh, my God, those dishes. <laughs> I'm thinking more about the dishes than my assignment. Mm, no, that is not a problem I have. See, I see when you say about organising your space, I think of it in a different way. So I think of buying the equipment you need in advance. So sometimes getting stationery, getting highlighters and getting a setup. That I'm on board with. Always, <laughs> certainly when I was a student, I would always have a shopping trip before mm -hmm. any, any mm -hmm. great endeavour. I'm going to start an exercise regime. Oh, well, I need to buy some exercise clothes. And, you know, I'm going to start cooking differently. Oh, I need a kitchen gadget. I've got mm -hmm. so many kitchen gadgets. It's a bit of a problem I have. I don't think I ever bought, like, pens or highlighters or something like no. that because I would just get everything from Freshers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would um, I'd always do a specific trip before my exams I'd, put, I'd try and think what do I need and buy it so I get printer ink in because I used to live in my room and have a printer there so I'd have to use the libraries and so I didn't have to walk um, I used to try and think okay I'm going to use sticky notes and need key cards and just buy them all in bulk probably from Blackwell's or also from uh, a shop close to buy if needed other retail emporiums are available <laughs> yes <laughs> and so I go to, yeah <laughs> sorry I'm disrupting the podcast carry on Alex so yeah, I'd buy them all in advance just so that I'd be organised and I wouldn't I wouldn't really be overly focused about doing my dishes but I would be focused on getting all the equipment there that I need so I didn't think oh okay I'll just go on down and go down on a trip to the local 
shopping center to get to buy more things. I think when it comes to organization, Alex, you're like next level. I, yeah. Do we all agree? Yeah. <laughs> I think the most fascinating thing about that comment is I used to be the most unorganized person I think I've ever heard of. And it shows that anyone can change over time, over reflection and by looking back on things. Was it a conscious change? Did no. you decide one day, right, I'm going to be organized and that was it? No, not necessarily. I just started changing slightly by making lots of small changes over time. Because I used to not do my homework, because I used to not write it down and just forget to do it. I used to not plan my time to do it in. I used to not have resources and turn up without my exercise books or without sheets of paper I'd been given because I hadn't planned it, I hadn't thought about it, I just thought about other things. When I was at school, I was terrible at remembering because sometimes you gave your books in and sometimes you took your books back. And this, that sounds quite simple and straightforward. Sometimes you had your books to bring in and sometimes you didn't, but they just, it was totally beyond me. And I had a friend, bless her, who I used to ring. Every, this, was, this was back before you had instant messaging and WhatsApp and all that kind of thing. It was on the landline. I would pick up my landline telephone every single morning and I would ring her to ask which books we were supposed to have and which books we weren't. And her poor long suffering, well, she was poor and long suffering. And then her poor long suffering parents would be answering the phone to me every morning. And it got to the point where they'd just pick up the phone and go, I'll pass you over, Naomi. And pass the phone over because they knew at that time in the morning it would be me ringing to find out about books. I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I think these things do develop just naturally. Um, sometimes these skills are not developed um, until we get more practice using them. So that's a very creative way of getting organized. So speaking about getting organized, um, we have some student voices from students who are currently studying here that are going to play now. So I would say to get a diary uh, to prioritize your deadlines so that you do the most important thing first. Um, I'm a busy mum. I also work part time. So my is I make the, make the timetable for each and everything. So it will be timetable for home routine, timetable for my study, timetable for kids activity. And I stick to it. Um, I think that's that's what more important it is. You do the things each day instead of keeping them piling up. If you make your bed every day, it makes the start of your day a lot more positive. Clean room, clean mind. Okay, so I think the most important thing is um, I always check my diary and I make sure that I prioritise my work. So obviously study comes first and then obviously the paid work and from there union work and then I've got my social time. So that was the student voices. Has anyone got any thoughts about those? Diana, say what you were just saying before we started recording. I was... <laughs> I was saying that I'm actually really happy to hear that there are other students that need a clean room mm. to do their studies. So I thought that it's something really personal, but actually mm. hearing more people mm. talking about it, it's really Yeah, I'm still not sold. I never make my bed as well. Mm. Just what? I don't think, I, I just never do I it. I completely agreed with that statement. <laughs> maybe I should, maybe I should. <laughs> maybe. Maybe next, every day will be a happy next day. Next podcast, everybody, listen in because I'll report back. I will try making my bed. I never do it. But then, to me, making your bed is what you did back when you had like layers of sheets. So when I used to stay at my grandma's, it would be a it would be a sheet that would be folded over and then a blanket, a duvet on top of that, and then a blanket on top of that, and it all had to be tucked in and everything. If it's just a duvet, what, do what you, kind what of have... making is involved? Shaking it so it's nice and flat. yeah, I do the same thing every day. Oh, no, I don't do that. It only takes ten seconds, and I think for me, especially when I was working in my room, it really helped me to get my head focused and not be distracted. I think overall though, those student voices agreed with what we had to say. Mm. So it's interesting how they echo without prompts what, what we're saying here. So they talked generally about having a calendar, organizing your space so that it works for you, and also prioritizing your time, which is something we haven't really covered potentially. So mm. about prioritizing the hours that you have to try and make, to, to get the most out of your time. Yeah, I think also for me, uh, prioritization is a big part of that flexibility. So priorities are not fixed. Priorities can change. The assignment that is due in, in three months time might not be your priority, mm -hmm. but when you get to two mm -hmm. days before the deadline, that might become your priority. Um, so Maybe that for me is a big part of flexibility is keeping an eye on what's, what has changed priority, um, either because of time passing or because of new information you found or just even how you're feeling about it emotionally. Um, that's a big part of it for me. And a lot of it comes down to reflecting upon what priorities are and when the, those are your priorities. 
So I think reflection is one of the most important things that you can be doing. So Naomi, how would you go about reflecting? Based on all the different models that I've read, there's the, there's these three stages to reflection. There's a descriptive stage. So think about a description of what, what you're reflecting on. So, okay, I'm going to do this real time about making my bed. So my descriptive stage is I don't currently make my bed in the mornings. I have no issue with that. It has not, I feel, negatively impacted on my life. But I have been hearing things today that suggest that it might be something I need to try. That's my descriptive phase. Then, I forgot what my second phase is now. Descriptive, then do some thinking about that. So, and I am genuinely, I'm thinking about this now. So I'm thinking about what people have said to me. I'm considering the fact that it might be a good idea and what impact it might have. Also, what negatives about it. It's going to take me time in the mornings. I'm going to have to remember to do it. Am I going to leave my house, get halfway down the road and think, oh, no, I didn't make my bed today, turn around and go back? Because that is the kind of thing I will do. (laughs) Uh, Both forget and then also feel the need to come back and do it. But also in terms of those questions, questions like why, who, what, where, when, all those questions about what you're thinking about, to do some thinking about it. And then the third stage is something future focused. So I'm going to make an action plan. I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. And I am going to report back when I'm in the office tomorrow morning as to whether I feel better. I might even make, I should write down, shouldn't I? Start keeping a little one line diary of how I feel each morning compared to my experiences of, of, of making the bed. And again, I might put the, that three stage process in. So when I'm making those notes, I might do a description did I do it this, that morning? Um, how did I feel whilst I was doing it? Oh no, description first. Did I do it or not? When did I do it? Maybe how did I do it? Then some thinking about it. So how do I feel about having made the bed or not made the bed? And then that future focus, what am I going to do differently the next day? Hmm. It's a very good model. A bit of a random example, I apologise. But you know, but it's, but it's true, it's real life. And next podcast, everybody, like I say, I will report back. So subscribe ring the bell i don't think you can do that to podcasts. do you not ring the bell in podcasts Maybe i'm we'll trying to get on board with all the the terminology everybody i'm trying we can can we have a bell no we yeah have maybe it. i have a bell can we get podcast. a real bell maybe when maybe after these become really Ding. successful we can we have to remember the budget for it then. when you get really successful we might get, we need a bell you know i'm going bell. back home i'm pretty sure i got a bell back home i've got a bell that's lying around <laughs> so Catherine, have you got anything that you would like to add about reflection <laughs> Um, so when I'm reflecting, I try and think in terms of questions. So I think about if there's anything that I could do differently or would do differently next time. So if I'm thinking about the previous semester, like Diana said before, what would I do differently for this next semester? Also think what you'd do the same is a really key question. I think reflection and saying critical thinking, there's, there's a temptation to make it all quite negative. What did I do wrong that I can do differently next time? I think it's important to keep those positive elements of it through as well. What did I do really well? What am I pleased with that I'm going to do again? I'm glad you agree with me. That's exactly what I was going to say. Did I steal your point? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to weigh in with in a second. But yeah, it's a great thing to do. Think about the positives and the negatives. Otherwise, you might change something by accident that actually should remain the same. So, Jenna, have you got anything you'd like to add? Yes, I think that reflection doesn't have to be academic or formal. So you can actually take two or three minutes to think about a particular situation while you're traveling or maybe while you're at the gym. So it doesn't really have to be written down mm-hmm. or very formal or done after like a model or something. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to make it complicated yeah. in some situations. You can just like think about it for two, three minutes and maybe think what you do differently or... Yeah. Or the same. Or, I'm going to yeah. steal Alex's point again. Yeah. Or what would you do the same? But then I think that people reflect many times without realizing that they are reflecting. I agree. So it's just about maybe thinking about that place where you went to eat yesterday. Mm -hmm. And if you like the food and everything, you're reflecting. Mm -hmm. But then I don't think you think about it as reflection. You were reporting back on on food places when we got in this morning, weren't you? Again, it's that reflective process. In fact, you did a comparison, didn't you? Of two different places. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Critical thinking. (laughs) These these all all these skills are things that we do use all the time in our lives. It's just recognizing that sometimes and pulling it into our academic work Mm -hmm. um, is all that we need to do. It's all all about the application. If you do want to find out more about reflection, or if you've identified any areas that you want to actually improve upon, what a really good place to do that would be through our skills guides. 
we've got some we've got lots of information about areas to improve and also about reflection so Catherine would you like to talk about them in more detail yeah so we've got an organization section on our skills guides and we've got a reflection section on our skills guides our skills guides can be found at the University of Derby website um, go onto the library and then go on to finding subject information once you're in finding subject information there's an option for skills guides and have a little look at the ones we've got there yeah, there's overall there's 13 different areas, and in those there's lots of little, little guides that can help you improve your your individual skill areas. So yeah, that's all we've got time for today. Overall, we've had a great discussion about some of the some of the methods about how you can organise, how you can reflect, and also some good advice from students and the skills team. If you want to find more podcasts, then continue listening or check out other episodes that we have available. Currently, we have one for exam revision as well as some student stories about how they can improve various skills. Thank you very much for watching. Listening. We'll, thank you very much for listening. And <laughs> Ring <we'll>, the bell. <laughs> there is no bell. I'm going to get that into the final edit <laughs> in some manner. 